Earlier this year, I got a new roaster. This one here, the Elio Bullet. It's a very advanced coffee roaster, but also a pretty expensive one. I would say this is probably the culmination of more than a decade of roasting coffee at home. So I wanted to talk a bit about my journey as a coffee roaster, how it started and uh, where I'm at today. So in this video, we'll talk about different approaches to coffee roasting, what kind of models are available, what methods are worth looking into, and uh, hopefully that can give you an idea if you're just uh, getting into coffee roasting, what should be your next step. So as I said in the beginning, I've been roasting coffee for a while. I'm not sure exactly what year I started, but it was probably around 2007, 2008. So uh, that would be around 15 years by now. When I first got into uh, roasting, I didn't really know a whole lot about coffee. I definitely didn't know anything about specialty coffee. And you could even argue that uh, it barely hadn't started at that point. There are several reasons that I got into uh, roasting back then. Uh, first of all, I was definitely interested in coffee. Uh, I had a vague idea that coffee could be a really delicious beverage. And I was also experimenting at home with uh, different brewing methods. Uh, but then I also had the idea that uh, roasting at home would uh, probably save you some money. And uh, when you're a student on a tight budget, it's uh, good to save money. So the way I got started was simple. I found a local roaster that was also selling green beans and uh, then I would buy a kilo at a time and then just roast it at home in my oven. Back then there wasn't a whole lot of uh, knowledge available about roasting. I guess it was a bit more of a secret society back then and uh, especially when it came to home roasting it was a little bit what I would call trial and error. But that wasn't the biggest problem so besides lacking roasting knowledge I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about coffee in general and especially not green coffee. So for instance, I probably couldn't tell the difference between a Kenyan coffee and an Ethiopian coffee if I just tasted them blindly. And uh, you could say the same about the difference between naturals and washed coffee. It was something I would read a little bit about on uh, Sweet Maria's, but uh, understanding the difference in the cup, yeah, that was still uh, far away from where I was at at that point. However, in the end, I kind of settled on a recipe that worked well for a few years. So uh, I would preheat the oven to around 200 degrees, and then I would load my beans in on a big baking tray, and then I would turn them around every fourth minute, or when they looked like uh, they were a little bit uneven in terms of color. And then when the beans started cracking, I would kind of eyeball it and then decide where to finish the roast. I would say I was definitely not going for a very light style, I was more into developed coffees back then, and that also makes sense since I was uh, mostly brewing mocha pot, French press, I was dabbling a little bit with espresso back then. I had a Francis Francis and a DeLonghi machine. So uh, yeah, the darker, the better was uh, probably the philosophy back then. One of the only places you could learn about coffee and coffee roasting online back then was an American shop called Sweet Maria's. They would have a lot of articles talking about home roasting and such. And those were the ones who inspired me to take it a little bit further and invest in a popcorn roaster. So as it turns out, roasting coffee and roasting popcorn has a little bit in common. Both of them are seeds that you kind of slowly take from uh, the raw state to a more prepared state. And uh, they also both have a reaction that is called cracking. The big difference is popcorn turns from corn into these uh, popcorns that we eat uh, when they start cracking, whereas uh, coffee beans just go from uh, that kind of yellow uh, brown color to a more uh, real coffee bean color. But popcorn roasters uh, made a lot of sense to use since they were rather affordable and uh, they still worked uh, pretty well if you were just roasting a very small batch of uh, greens. After a little bit of trial and error, I could get better results from the popcorn roasting compared to the oven. The main downside was that uh, the batches was quite a bit smaller. I think usually I was roasting around uh, 90 to 100 grams. Around this time, there also started to be a bit more stuff going on in the coffee community. The Hario V60 started to be the brewer of choice if you went to uh, the cool coffee shops around in town. So at this point, specialty coffee was starting to pick up a little bit more. And uh, personally, I was also moving more away from uh, espresso and uh, the mocha pot, these kind of like uh, more traditional styles that favor a dark roast and moving more towards uh, a little bit more of a medium roast. Overall, I can say that uh, at this point in time, 
The popcorn machine actually did pretty well for what I wanted to have in my coffee. And uh, I'm not sure how I would judge it today, but uh, as I remember it back then, I had some really good roasts from uh, this machine. The main problem with a popcorn roaster is that it can be a little bit fast. So uh, I remember having a technique where I would turn off the roaster and then I would kind of stir the beans manually and then I would uh, start it again to draw out the roast a little bit more. But uh, still, as far as I recall, it was pretty common to have roasting times around uh, five to six minutes. So I would say the main pros of popcorn roasting is that uh, it's a step up from the oven. You do get more consistent beans, but at the same time, it's uh, difficult to uh, develop what I would say like a, a true roast profile. You will just have to kind of get it going and then uh, look at the beans, the color outside, and then you'll determine when your roast is finished. And it's very easy to go uh, too far because when you only have a small amount of beans and you're using that hot air, then uh, yeah, that can really tend to accelerate the roast. But after roasting on the popcorn machine for a few years, I was starting to feel like it was holding me back a little bit in terms of what I could do. First of all, the batches were kind of small, but then uh, as you read more about uh, coffee roasting, the theory behind it, uh, on uh, different forums, you also realize that uh, life would just be much better if you had a drum roaster with a real thermal couple. And uh, then I decided to invest in uh, this one here, the Caldi White. So the Caldi White is a bit of a cult favorite. It's made by a small Korean company that uh, just produces uh, drum roasters. And it's just built like a tank. I've dropped it from my roasting station a few times and you basically can't destroy it. It's just made of uh, solid steel all the way through. It can handle around 250 to 300 grams of uh, beans pretty easily. That's kind of the optimal range. And then when I got it originally, it's got a digital thermocouple here. I've replaced this one with um, Fidget, uh, but more about that later. But uh, this uh, digital thermocouple was also quite precise. So uh, suddenly I was starting to experience uh, a more consistent uh, workflow when I was roasting. Usually I would get the first crack around the same temperature every time. Of course, there can be a little bit of difference depending on the bean, but uh, overall I was starting to develop a bit more of an understanding of the green bean, uh, of the roast cycle, of the different phases. So I think at this point it really helped me uh, in terms of getting a better understanding of roasting in general and also just roasting for myself. I was able to uh, produce all the coffee that I wanted to have at home uh, just by roasting uh, once a week or something like that. So the way the Caldi roaster works is very straightforward. You just add it on top of a heating source like this. Uh, I think for most people this heating source will probably be a kind of a camping stove and then you just turn it on, you flick the on off button and then the drum will start spinning. It's powered by the motor here. And then you load in your beans on top of the funnel. They run in here and then they go into the drum. And then after that, you can use your trier, see where your beans are, what color they are at. You have your thermocouple to look at and uh, that will give you an idea about where you are in the roast. I think the roasting philosophy that makes the most sense when you're using a machine like this is to start with a high flame and then you reduce it a couple of times throughout the roast and uh, that will give you a nice and smooth curve. I will say that you can get uh, very good coffee from a roaster like this, but uh, it also requires a lot of uh, concentration, especially because uh, using this uh, camping stove as a heat source, it's uh, very difficult to uh, accurately get the same flame all the time. Also, if you're roasting outside, depending on the day, the weather, the temperature, uh, it's also going to uh, have an effect on uh, what you can do with the roaster. But overall, if you're willing to put in some time and effort, uh, you can get pretty good results uh, with uh, a drum roaster like this. However, after using it for several years, I uh, started to buy more coffee from uh, third wave roasters again. And I slowly realized that uh, maybe my coffee was not quite as good as the top roasters around in the world. Also, my uh, personal preference was shifting towards going lighter and lighter. So uh, I wanted to uh, get a bit more out of the profile. And um, I was feeling that uh, I couldn't get everything I wanted from the Caldi White. So first of all, you don't really have any control over the airflow. 
uh, which is something that you probably need to control better if you want the absolute best from your coffee. Often I would feel like there was a little bit of a roasty flavor to my beans and I thought it was coming from uh, the fact that it didn't have any airflow, especially as you go into the first crack. It's important that you can get all the smoke and all the chaff away from the drum uh, so you can get a cleaner, smoother finish. I was also wondering if it was my cleaning that was not good enough, so I would uh, take the roaster apart and clean the drum quite frequently to see if I could get better results. In the end, however, I kind of realized that maybe I will need to build an airflow system uh, so I can do something about it. I was getting inspired by this uh, Taiwanese roaster called Hugi, which uses its bean coogler as a source to add a fan to the roasting process. And I was trying to build the same for this one here. The main problem was just since I was roasting outside, I had to set up this uh, system every time. But there's also this problem with the Kaldi that when you want to uh, unload your beans, you have to remove this whole front facing panel here with the trier and the bean loader. So in the end, it turned out to be a bit of a mess to use an airflow in daily life when I was roasting. At the same time, I also wanted to uh, get access to roasting software. And uh, that meant I had to uh, remove the digital thermocouple that it uh, came with and then buy these um, more intelligent ones from a company called Fidget. And then you can plug the thermocouples in and connect them to a computer. And then you can use this uh, kind of fancy software called Artisan. So it was interesting to suddenly have access to the curves on the computer to use the Artisan software and feel like you are one of the real roasters. But uh, on the other hand, it was also a very uh, cumbersome setup uh, to take the computer outside set up the roasting station and then uh, connect all these different pipes for the airflow. And uh, in the end, I don't really think I created a more uh, consistent roast by doing it this way. So uh, one thing is to uh, record all the data on the computer. But when your conditions are so different and especially uh, you're not sure if you have the same level of airflow every time uh, and you don't record these things. so. I wasn't able to record the airflow or the power setting very accurately. So in the end, I'm not really sure if this super complicated homemade setup made much sense. And uh, it wasn't too much fun to uh, roast this way. So it was at this point, the itch to upgrade kind of uh, got me again. And I was starting to think about, okay, if I want a different roaster, what do I want it to do? So uh, there are these interesting uh, new air roasters like the Capologic and the Ikawa which are really cool, but they do have a small uh, capacity. And I was kind of coming from this one here, which can roast 250 grams. And I definitely didn't want to uh, downgrade that. So I wanted a roaster that could roast even bigger batches and uh, make my life a little bit easier, especially since I was uh, consuming so much coffee at home. I'm doing all this testing of new uh, grinders and uh, new equipment. And that means that you really go through a lot of beans uh, quite quickly. Uh, at the same time, I wanted something that could supply my just uh, regular drinking and uh, that would also require a significant capacity. So at this point, I was starting to think 500 grams might be the minimum. Uh, but when you get to this point and you look around in the market, actually, there's not a whole lot of stuff available. So it was at this point I started considering the Alia Bullet again. If you don't know it, this uh, product is actually made by two Danish guys. It was developed quite recently. I can't remember the exact year, maybe it was 2015, the first version came out. Uh, but it's an interesting story. Basically, these guys were just scratching their own itch. They didn't work with coffee or roasting in the first place. But they just had this idea that uh, coffee roasting at home could be done more efficiently. Uh, than it's uh, been done before. So after going around and considering it for several weeks, uh, after all, it is a big investment. Uh, also for me, it's by far the most uh, expensive coffee equipment I own. I decided I would uh, go for it and then uh, hopefully it's gonna pay for itself in the long run. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy I did. If going from oven and popcorn to Caldi felt like a big jump, then going from Caldi to Bullet almost feels like an even bigger jump. So it's almost like going from a typewriter to a MacBook. So the difference is simply so big. I will say the most fantastic thing going from the Caldi White to the Bullet 
is that this is kind of a self-contained unit. So you have everything that you need here and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, using a separate heat source. So with the Caldi White, uh, sometimes you would run out of gas in the middle of a roast. You would also have to be uh, very careful with that uh, hot flame all the time. Uh, but uh, having the bullet, which has a built-in induction heating, is uh, just uh, so much nicer. At the same time, you also have the built-in cooling tray, which is something you also have to purchase separately for this more traditional kind of uh, drum roaster. The bullet also has a chaff collector. Uh, if you don't know what chaff is, it's this little uh, skin that sits around the coffee bean and uh, it's a really annoying byproduct of coffee roasting, especially if you get it inside because it tends to fly around, it's very lightweight, so it's difficult to scoop up. So it's a very annoying part of roasting, but the uh, Elio also has a built-in chaff collector, which makes it uh, very easy to uh, get rid of all this uh, stuff after you finish your roasting. Also, the roasting process in itself is uh, very simple. You load your beans here and uh, you unload them here and then you have this little trier so you can uh, follow your progress as you're roasting. I uh, usually just look through this little uh, glass piece here, but uh, overall you feel uh, pretty confident that you know what's going on inside the roaster. Obviously, the capacity is another big thing in favor of the bullet, so uh, this one is graded up to uh, one kilo. I haven't roasted that much yet. I've uh, been uh, settling on uh, half a kilo so far because I feel like I can learn a little bit faster that way. It does take a while to go through a kilo of uh, roasted coffee. And especially if you don't produce the best roast, it's a little bit annoying to have that much uh, that uh, could be better. But I expect in time when I've gotten to know the roaster a little bit better, yeah, then I'm going to be roasting at uh, full capacity. And that also means that I will be able to uh, share more beans with my friends, uh, sell to people, maybe even uh, to you guys at some point. So these are the basic things, the kind of day-to-day -day things that are worth uh, thinking about. But the most uh, epic, cool thing about the bullet is the software itself. So uh, you basically just connect it with a USB cable to your computer, and then you get access to the software called Roast Time which is uh, developed by Elio. It's uh, their own custom uh, software. And it's a little bit like uh, Artisan, that famous uh, open source roasting software I was using with uh, Caldea White, but it's just a lot more advanced. And uh, basically everything that you need to record is uh, recorded automatically. So uh, let's say you're making any changes to the fan speed or the drum speed or the power uh, those changes will automatically be locked into your software where you will have it on a graph so you can follow along and see how the temperature is uh, rising or going down and then you can see what you did manually to the roast at the same time. So if you want to uh, repeat your roast or try to analyze what you could have done differently then uh, this just makes a huge difference. But there's one thing that's even better and that is that uh, you're able to replay all these actions so you can save them as a recipe and then let's say you are going to load uh, the same bean just a different batch then you can replay exactly the same thing that you did before uh, so uh, that just makes it really easy to automate a bigger workflow uh, let's say if you're not just roasting for yourself but uh, you're going to roast uh, five kilos then uh, you can do it very easily with this uh, function here so I will say the software is uh, extremely good. It's almost a little bit uh, too advanced and complicated because it's also built with this idea that uh, you might be a professional or semi-professional roaster. So you have access to a centralized library of uh, beans that you can import into the setting here. I haven't used any of those uh, functions yet. I like just to manipulate my roast either by using the computer or the manual uh, buttons here, but I could see those functions being useful if you want to take it a little bit further. So I know there are several people who've been starting a small roastery just with the bullet. I will admit a lot of the first roasts haven't been uh, that great, but I think that's completely natural when you are moving from uh, one device to another one. You have to learn how it reacts and then when you kind of get some uh, muscle memory and understand the functions a little bit better, you're able to get what you want. 
I will say I've finally settled on a light roast recipe that I've been using several times now with uh, really good results. So uh, I'm quite happy with that, but there are other aspects of the roaster that I will have to uh, develop more and uh, learn more about. Since this is a very different type of roaster uh, with uh, different functions, uh, different kind of thermocouples, it's difficult to just translate everything that you did in your old roaster one-to-one. -one. I think uh, even if you came from a professional roaster with the way the thermocouples are set up in uh, one of those, it would be uh, quite difficult what you uh, used to do uh, if you want to uh, do it on the bullet. And that's because the bullet uses two different thermocouples. So it has an infrared thermocouple that's uh, a lot more precise than the thermocouples that uh, you usually seen in coffee roasters. So a lot of theory that's developed uh, for coffee roasting is more aimed at uh, this kind of old school technology uh, whereas they haven't really caught up to uh, what the bullet can do. So I've been roasting in a completely new way compared to a lot of the ideas that are circulating around there. But uh, the results in the cup, you can't really argue with them. If the coffee tastes good, then uh, obviously what you're doing uh, with the roaster uh, doesn't matter that much. So it's still early days for me with the Alio bullet, but overall I've been uh, pretty blown away uh, with uh, how it performs, how intelligent it is compared to uh, so many of the other options available in the market. And it's really mind-boggling to think that uh, these two Danish brothers were able to uh, go from idea to execution with a product like this in just a few years. So actually, when I look back at my coffee roasting journey, I will say at each stage I had what I needed uh, for my uh, development to progress. Uh, the different tools weren't too advanced and they were giving me tasty results uh, at the time. But then as my palate grew more discerning and I wanted more from my coffee, then I went in and made the upgrade. So I will say at each stage of uh, coffee roasting, you can definitely enjoy it. I think it's a little bit the same as uh, if you were starting to brew beers at home, uh, you wouldn't expect your first couple of batches to be anywhere near as good as some uh, craft brewery that's been doing it for years and have the, all the professional equipment. But uh, you can still get something that you enjoy. So it's also about the enjoyment of crafting something yourself, baking your own bread, uh, roasting your own coffee, brewing your own beer. All these things are hobbies that I can definitely understand why people are getting into. That's just something very fulfilling from taking something raw and then turning it into a finished product. So I truly think that roasting coffee at home gives you a deeper understanding of coffee in general. So if you're a real geek just for the education of it, I think it's uh, worth taking up. Are you going to save money? Are you going to get super awesome roasts that you can't buy from uh, the professionals out there? Well, that's more difficult to say, but uh, I think the journey is still worth it. By the way, if there are any home roasters out here, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. Tell me about what your journey has been like. And if there are any uh, bullet roasters here, I'd also love to share notes with you. I'll leave a link to my current favorite recipe for the lighter roast down in the description. And then you can download it and try it on your own uh, bullet. And uh, yeah, leave any feedback if you have it. But if there are any Caldi White roasters or popcorn roasters or oven roasters, I'd also love to hear from you down below. That's it for today. I will see you in another coffee video very soon. Mm -hmm.